The world was my oyster. Every year, my school would perform exceptionally well in their final exams. So well that the state newspaper always published a cover story about these young people. These were no ordinary year 12s. They had unbeatable grades, full scholarships to Cambridge, Oxford, Harvard. They could do anything that they wanted with their futures, and because of that, they were my superheroes. My name is Elizabeth Knight, I'm 20 years old, and I've always been a big dreamer. In high school, my secret dream was to become one of the newspaper kids. I figured that if I could get to where they were, then I might be able to work out what I was actually doing with my life. Flash forward five years, and I found myself in their shoes. Despite this image, uh, I actually had no idea what I was doing with my life at this point in time. I was burnt out, physically and mentally exhausted. And despite 12 years of schooling, I felt further from knowing who I was, who I wanted to become, and what I was going to do with my future more than ever before. Many people have said to me, isn't that how most young people feel when they leave school? They'd be right. I was one amongst many displaced young people trying to find their place in the world. Unfortunately, though, this logic didn't really help me, and instead I began to doubt myself. If everybody else is going through this, then why am I the only one who feels so bad? The answer I found was that my anxieties and my fears for the future were not limited to the outcome of my own. They extended to that of the world also. Three days before my graduation, 131 people died in a terrorist attack in Paris while watching a concert. In the 12 months that followed, North Korea began firing ballistic missiles, the UK voted in favour of Brexit, Zika had become a global health threat, nationalist movements were growing around the world, and terrorist groups were continuing to instill fear. Global warming had become evident, its effects devastating. War, poverty, corruption, disease. I felt crazy for fearing that World War III was imminent. One of these events was the first thing that I saw on my Facebook feed each morning, and the last thing that I read before bed each night. It felt as though I was consuming this overwhelming negativity from every channel, and that we were hurtling towards this terrifying future at a startling rate. It begged a question that I really didn't want to ask. Is the world at its worst? Is the future going to be more terrible than ever before? Let's pause for a second. I know I'm not the only young person who holds this fear, and that, in fact, this insatiable fear for the future is, in fact, a deeply embedded belief for many of our youth. Objectively, though, that doesn't quite add up. We live in a time where human quality of life is at its highest in human history. Thanks to social media, we have a world of information at our fingertips. Many of us have a roof over our heads and food on the table. So if the world is not objectively more worse than it has been in the past, then why do some of us feel as though it is? Where is this horrible sense of helplessness coming from? And why is it that our young people seem to feel this fear so strongly? Let me explain. Over the last three years, I've been working with thousands of young people, and in that time, I've seen their dreams, their hopes, and their fears for the future. I've also seen them experiencing this challenge firsthand. Because of this, I've come to three conclusions as to why our young people seem to feel this fear so strongly. The first factor is social media. I'm a member of Generation Z, who are the most recent generation to come of age, and they've experienced the very best and the very worst of humanity more intensely, frequently, and extremely than any of us before. Social media demands our attention. It asks us to respond with immediacy and urgency to the things that are going on around us. Because of this, it can make us feel more anxious and exacerbate the fears that we already have. Simultaneously, it can make it more difficult to connect with other people in person, making us feel more alone with our worries. 
It's not surprising then that Generation Z, as the greatest consumers of social media, are also the ones who have the highest rates of mental illness in the form of anxiety and depressive disorders. And similarly, that social media can create an extremely negative and selective view of the world, that for Gen Z is the one that informs them the most and that they question the least. The second factor is progress. Basically, um, throughout uh, the most recent decades, human society has progressed both technical, technologically and socially at unprecedented rates. Because of this, it means that our basic human needs, our fundamental survival needs, are more readily fulfilled than ever before. This means that our needs have become more complex in nature and for our young people, overwhelmingly psychological. What this looks like is that our young people crave a sense of connection with others, a sense of purpose and validation. It's not surprising that we can see our young people looking further away from their religion, their families and their leaders as a source of direction and purpose in their lives. Instead, they're looking to their jobs as a vehicle through which they can change the world. They have to do something, create something, change something, or else what is the point? The third factor, and most critically in my opinion, is that Generation Z have a deadline. I remember very vividly my year four teacher getting up to give a presentation about the importance of recycling. In a tirade of sorts, he began to describe this terribly dystopic future that we could anticipate if we didn't look after the environment. All I remember is that he described a picture of humans living amongst cockroaches as the lone survivors of the climate crisis. Now, I'm pretty sure this isn't actually what he said, but my takeaway for my eight-year-old self was very clear, that the future is going to be bad, and it's my responsibility to change that. I believe that we have primed an entire generation to fear for their futures. Just as they enter adulthood, we give them a deadline of 12 years before irreversible damage occurs to their planet. We give them a deadline that is grounded in scientific reasoning, which they have been taught to respect and to trust, only amplifying the urgency and fear that they already experience. We give them a deadline that promises to end their futures before they even begin. I believe that we owe it to Gen Z to create a more compelling vision for the future than this, don't you think? If we do that, then we might just allow them to find their purpose and their place in the world and to enter their futures with confidence, not fear. To unlock the potential of an entire generation by allowing them to believe that the future may indeed be better. As much as I understand the fierce challenges that our world is facing, and how messed up the world can seem. I also appreciate the hopes and dreams that our young people have for the future that look remarkably different to this. Generation Z, you've been taught your whole lives that you will be the leaders of the future. You've been taught to carry the tremendous weight of the world on your shoulders all the time. But that does not mean that you alone should bear the responsibility to change it. As a big dreamer, I, this is a quote that I live by. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. To all the young people out there, if there's any truth at all to this message, then you don't have to worry. The future is already yours. Thank you very much. <laughs>